Welcome to warrenalford.com. I'm glad you're here. This is your source for quality management information. There are seven original quality control tools, and we're going to talk a little bit about each one. They are cause and effect diagrams, flow charts, check sheets, histograms, control charts, Pareto charts, and scatter diagrams. The six basic problem solving steps involved with using these tools are to identify the problem, select a problem to work on, define the problem, if a large problem, break it down into smaller ones, investigate the problem, collect data and facts, analyze the problem, find all possible causes and potential solutions, solve the problem, select from the available solutions and implement whatever appears to be the best course of action, and then confirm the results. Was the problem fixed? Was the solution permanent? Two extremely important steps are to create a clear definition of the problem and determine if the solution is effective in solving the problem. Again, break it down into smaller bite-sized pieces. Let's start with a cause and effect diagram. A cause and effect diagram breaks a problem down into those bite-sized pieces. It displays many possible causes in a graphic manner. It's also called a fishbone. You may hear it referred to as a 4M or Ishikawa chart as well. It shows how various causes interact, and it usually follows brainstorming rules when generating ideas. The fishbone session is divided into three parts. First is brainstorming. The second is prioritizing, where you put all the brainstorming ideas into some type of order. And the development of the action plan, where you take all of the elements and put it together in the do part of PDCA. This is what we're going to do to solve the problem. The fishbone chart is very good, again, at trying to get down to exactly how to fix a problem because you consider all the elements and, and all the things that would go into it. Some of the things being like the M's for material, machine, man, measurement, and method, environment as well. And the chart does look like a fishbone when you finish with it. The next is the flow chart or process map, which is what most people know it as. It's useful both to people familiar with the process and to those who need to understand a process, such as an auditor. This is a very valuable tool for an auditor because you can take a look at that flow chart and really get down to what is this process trying to accomplish and what steps are used to accomplish that. So it's a very handy tool for that. It can depict the sequence of product, containers, paperwork, operator actions, administrative procedures. It's often a starting point for process improvement. When auditing, you can look at the flow chart, and sometimes after a few audit interviews, a couple steps in there just seem to jump off the page and lend themselves to being streamlined or moving in the process, which would cut down non-value-added processes like movement and things like that. Again, flowchart is, is good for that. Process mapping is another thing that a lot of people will do with a procedure that is written in tabular form, written in paragraphs. A lot of times the process map will be used to make that an easier flow so people can, again, look at that process and know exactly what that process is trying to accomplish. And there are several symbols that are used as well to determine different steps in a process, be it a decision step, maybe a sub-process. Check sheets and recording check sheets are also used. They're good for organizing and collecting data and facts. By collecting data, you can make a better decision, solve problems faster, and earn management support as well, especially from the quality end of it. The recording check sheet is used to collect measured or counted data. 
seen where you put the four marks and then you put a mark through there for the fifth mark to keep score at the ballpark or what have you. Well, that's a recording check sheet. You keep up with how many scores are made, how many home runs or what have you, and that data is collected by just making a little tick mark or a single mark on that sheet. And then those marks are tallied up into a total. Also a good way to check processes that produce certain steps over and over again within the process. It's a good way to count those things and then be able to go back and measure those things as well. Also checklist. It's a major type of check sheet. An example is a grocery list. It's a common example of a checklist. Checklists are often used for inspecting machines or products and things like that. They're also helpful when learning how to operate complex and delicate equipment like aircraft. Checklists come in very handy to make sure that everything has been done that needs to be done. Histograms are just simply frequency column graphs. They display a static picture of process behavior. Usually requires a minimum of 50 to 100 data points in order to adequately capture the measurement or the process in question. A histogram is usually characterized by a number of data points that fall within a given bar or interval. This is commonly referred to as frequency. How often does something happen? A stable process is most commonly characterized by a histogram that exhibits unimodal or L-shaped curve. So the bell-shaped curve is one good indicator of a stable process. And of course, a stable process is predictable. An unstable, normal distribution process is often characterized by a histogram that does not exhibit a bell-shaped curve. And of course, there are others as well, like poison, the binomial, and exponential, that do not display the single bell-shaped curve. Bimodal has two bell shapes side by side. And then, of course, for the normal distribution and variation and things like that, the variation inside the bell curve is just simply chance or natural variation. Any other variation is due to a special or assignable cause. Mm-hmm.